Miami, what happened? I just want to say before I get into this bit, uh, I am a speaker ready. I think you all know what's about to happen. Uh, I was did record last night. File got screwed up. That's why it's coming now. But you know what? In spite of that, Caleb Scott, take us away. Miami, I thought you were better than this. You know, Miami, Josh Bell said you guys would be celebrating. Big black sky over my town. I really thought Luis Rice said that they were going to be in Atlanta. But you know what? You're not. Stott had something to say about it. Yeah, I know it's stupid. Just got to see it for myself. I'm in the corner watching you kiss her. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Miami. Oh, you poor sex. Miami, Miami, Miami. What happened, guys? I could have sworn the Miami Marlins had her number. But uh, by the looks of this wild card series, you would have been solely mistaken. Phillies took care of business. And I even said to people, I might have said it in the episode with Matt Hartman. I said to people, this series is going to go one of two ways. It's going to be either the Phillies, Marlins, like back and forth, like tight games, great pitching, offense is getting shut down. Or it's going to be the Phillies throttle the Marlins because it's the Miami Marlins. And they really shouldn't have been in that position that playoff spot but you never know if people said that about the Phillies last year they shouldn't be there but they you know we saw what happened so anything could happen in the playoffs but the Phillies just took care of business against the Miami Marlins it was fantastic Wheeler dominant Nola 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 how about it you saw appearances from from Hoffman was great and and nobody is better at running a bullpen in the playoffs and Rob Thompson. He is surgical out there. Uh, so in this episode, it's not going to be a very long one because there's not a lot to talk about. Um, I, I We're going to do the series overview of the Marlins wild card sweep. Uh, and then we got to talk about the big bad Braves coming to town and some very angry Braves fans in my comments section, which is just brings a, it's so much joy to me when when Braves fans get angry. It's 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 funny. So in game one, we had Zach Wheeler against Jesus Lazardo, and it was really a pitcher's duel until the third. Uh, you know, the Phillies in the um, the Phillies in the first inning had second and third, nobody out. Alec Bohm had a pop fly to to right field. Dusty Wathen decided to hold Schwarber, and he was like, oh, "You shouldn't have done that." Bad night for Dusty Wathen in game one. Uh, and then you had uh, – then the Phillies couldn't execute with, with second and third, nobody out. Nobody could hit another fly ball. I really should have thought you should have swent, sent Schwarber in that instance. But, I mean, luckily, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It didn't matter in the end. Um, but the uh, – God, I, I'm all over the place. I don't have my notes up like an absolute buffoon. Give me a sec here. I was so amped up for that bit in the beginning um, with dancing on my own. Like, I really just wanted to jump into it because I'm like, I got to land this. I got to <laughs> I gotta land this joke right now. Um, here we go. So, uh, it was really a pitcher's duel up until the... Uh, third, uh, Johan Rojas worked an incredible bat against Jesus Lazardo, and his progression has been fantastic for the Phillies. And, and obviously, he's been rewarded. He's starting center fielder in the playoffs of a team that has World Series aspirations. That doesn't happen on accident. Um, and then he had a wild pitch, which allowed him to go to second. And then Alec Bohm ropes a double down the third baseline. Drake Bug couldn't come up with it. Uh, and there's more to talk about Jake Berger, uh, future San Diego Padre Jake Berger. Um, and then we get to the fourth inning. Casty hits a double, uh, single by Real Muto, double by Casty. And then um, Stott hits a single up the middle. Real Muto scores, but Casty's thrown out at home, which 
I guess Dusty was trying to make up for him holding Schwarber and regrets that decision. Or, you know, I also blame Castellanos a little bit for not sliding there. Should have slid. Uh, but hey, it's whatever. And then Pache on a single uh, up the middle to score Bryson Stott. And I love Christian Pache. I know I've done a complete 180 on that guy, but he's so electric and fun. And he's just out there balling out, just doing the, you know, the big ball celebration and, and enjoying your, and enjoying himself, which is, which is awesome. Uh, and then we get into... Uh, the seventh inning. So Zach Wheeler up until this point was Zach Wheeler. He was as advertised fastball hitting 99. He was dicing his pitches so efficient. Um, and then they kind of rallied in the sixth inning a little bit and leading up to the seventh, he was sitting for a little bit of an extended period of time. And you could kind of see because he was slowing down, not significantly, but enough where you're like, Oh, that's, that's concerning. And the Marlins took advantage of it. Uh, Josh Bell, I I hate him. I hate Josh Bell with every fiber in my being. The guy kills the Phillies, kills them, and then he puts on a Marlins uniform. Disaster, 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 disaster. I hate, hate, hate Josh Bell. Went three for four in this game. I think he went two for four in game two. He's just, he's stupid. It just felt like every time Josh Bell came up, he was hitting doubles and singles and working good at bats. Like, stop it Josh Bell just stop 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 it uh Josh Bell doubled and then Jake Berger singled a little rinky dink infield single and then another infield single by Brian De La Cruz to make it three to one so now things are tightening up a little bit and you got to give credit to Topper here because I've seen him so many times throughout the course of this season leave Zach Wheeler in that game and the the game is tied or, or whatever playoff Rob is like first sight of danger. We tried to let him work out of it. Goes to his best guy in Jose Alvarado to be the fireman in this situation to to get Yuli Gurriel as a pinch hitter striking out on three pitches. And then he does the wraparound inning again, which I know on this pod, we, we've been very anti, uh, anti wraparound inning. But I think the reason, uh, the reason they wanted Alvarado in there is because the third batter in this inning was a rise. So they gets John Birdie, he gets Garrett Hampson, and then of course Luis Arise, a little dink singles, singles boy uh at it again. And this is when my heart rate started palpitating. He goes to Jeff Hoffman, and it's not because of Jeff Hoffman, it was because Jorge Soler was batting. And I'm like, how far does Jorge Soler hit that ball? Hit this ball that he's about to hit. Uh, luckily he hit it right to Trey Turner and he got an out, which was a miracle because I've seen Jorge Soler and any, any uh, opposition hit that ball 450 feet to tie the game. Been burned too many times. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's not great. Okay. Can this ad go away? I was, I think cause I was playing dancing on my own. They were like set up professional audio settings on, on freaking zoom. It's hilarious. Uh, but then we got some insurance. Um, you, they bring in Okert um, in the eighth inning. Harper singles. JT flies out. And then Casty doubles. And as soon as Casty hit that ball down the line, I said, Harper scoring on this ball. Nothing is stopping him. Dusty Wathen tried. He, he gave him the old thing. And Harper said, uh-uh. Flips the helmet off. Slides in. Gives him like a little, let's go. Um, and then Craig in the ninth. Got a little worried because it led off with, who else? Josh Bell with a double. Uh, but then Craig was able to um, uh, was able to get Chisholm, get Berger, and then intentionally balked uh, Bell to third and then got Brian De La Cruz game one wrap up. And this game was awesome. Uh, you know, pitching, firing on all cylinders. Offense, I was going to say it had a lot left to be desired, but they kind of made up for that in game two. Um, they left a lot of runners on in this in this game, and and I hope I mean it worked great in game two, and we'll we'll talk about that when we get to game two. But my worry is against better competition. Not to say the Marlins aren't good competition; they're a playoff team. You got to give them respect there. But I mean, they're they, in my opinion, were the weakest team out of all of the playoff teams. In my opinion, you know, you look down the line, the Phillies better. 
the Brewers better. I mean, they both played two more games. Brewers on paper better. I mean, uh, the Brewers and Marlins, I feel like you could flip-flop almost. Um, very similar, great pitching, not great offenses. Um, Diamondbacks are better. Uh, you go to the American League, the Blue Jays, Jesus, that's a whole other thing in and of itself. The Twins, I like better. The the, the Rangers, I like better. The Rays, I like better. Or You know what I mean? Like, I, I can... The only team that I'm, like, flip-flopping with is, is the Marlins and the Brewers because I feel like they're kind of two sides of the same coin, really elite pitching and poor offense. Um, but what also spawned from this game was a great celebration from Nick Castellanos. Hits that double, gives them this. And everybody's like, oh, he flipped them off. He flipped them off. No, he's like, no, that's the ring finger. He said, why would I flip off my teammates? I love them. I love Nick Castellanos. There was that story that came out the other day um, talking about Nick Castellanos and his relationship with Weston Wilson. Uh, Nick Castellanos, if you didn't uh, read that story, basically it was Nick Castellanos is housing Weston Wilson and his wife in their home, in the Castellanos home. So all he has to focus on is baseball. Um, they develop a great relationship. There's something with tattoos. Uh, it was a really great read. I would very highly, I would highly recommend reading that. Um, it, it was a great read. So uh, check that out. Uh, but it, it, Nick Castellanos has turned into a, a fan favorite here. You know, we looked at the polar opposite of what it was last year. Last year was looking like a disaster signing bad year uh average was fine but the homers weren't there the ops was poor like the clutch situation he wasn't he just felt like he was a fish out of water in philadelphia and you know the tide started to turn a little bit and during the playoffs he had those great defensive uh plays and he even hit a lot better not uh, average wise not power wise but average wise hit a lot better uh in the playoffs and, you know, obviously he was an all-star this year, uh, hit fantastic, he had a great season for the Phillies this year. And he has turned into such a, 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 like a fan favorite. Like he's great with the fans, loves the media. Him and Liam Castellanos is, is the mayor of Philadelphia. It felt like during the summer, Liam was always involved somewhere. You know, you we had the famous shot of the Weston Wilson home run and uh, Liam Castellanos is there with the Lorenzen family and the Wilson family, and he's, like, celebrating and hugging everybody. Like, how the Castellanos family has embraced Philly is awesome, and that's what this city's all about. It's just being behind our guys and trusting our guys and loving our guys. We saw it with Turner. We've seen it with Harper, Schwarber, Real Muto, Bohm, Stott, all these guys. Like we, I love this Phillies team. I love the 2023 Phillies. Yes. The 2022 Phillies went to the world series and it's majority the same guys. Um, but something about this team, it's like, they know they're that good. They're better than last year. And on paper, I mean, the Braves in 2022 on paper were better than the team that won the world series. But you know, you get my point is like this, this something about this team, man, it's, Nothing is slowing them down. You have the home field advantage at, at Citizens Bank Park. You had Jeff Passon saying it's like an SEC place to play and nobody wants to play there. And it's four hours of hell. We saw the Thompson quote. And, and the Phillies fans, the Philly fans, I mean, in general, are fantastic. I love Philly fans. You call me bias, sue me. But the Phillies fans that are at Citizens Bank Park are ravenous that we i saw a clip of um that here let me pull it up because it was so funny it was a clip of spencer strider during an interview and he was talking about what he doesn't uh what what's like a sports hot take in here let me play for absolutely there should be no fans it then cuts to a bunch of philly fans heckling spencer strider followed by this That is courtesy of Jimmy Baker, Jimmy dot Baker zero on, on TikTok. Um, it, it's awesome. Like they're just great. You had the shot of after, I mean, speaking of Strider, we'll, we'll talk about the Braves in a second, but um, speaking of uh, Strider, uh, you saw the shot after the NLDS game three, the guy screaming, nice mustache, pussy, uh, part of my language. But I mean, you, you got to get the whole quote in there. Um, but it's, it's awesome. I'm so happy Citizens Bank Park is rocking again. And 
this game wasn't even the most electric one. It was actually game two, which was awesome. I think the main takeaway from this game is Aaron Nola. Aaron freaking Nola, man. I've bashed him with with good reason for Mr. Nola. Uh, but his past three starts, he has been dealing. This game, he went seven innings, three hits, no one runs, one walk, three strikeouts, was assisted with the double play a lot. It It's awesome. Like, it's Aaron Nola shoved. And for whatever reason, and I texted a bunch of people this, I trust Aaron Nola in a big game. I don't know if that is just recency bias i don't know if that's just me being an idiot i trust him in a big game and it's no secret that i don't like aaron nola as he is now um he's frustrating he's the worst best pitcher i've ever seen and i'll die on that hill but you gotta give him credit here man he has stepped up when he needed him to stepped up in the clincher stepped up even in the game before that stepped up here he's just figuring it out at the right time and whatever they did i think they said it was a mechanical thing whatever the hell they did it's working i don't know if it's a mechanical thing they they said in the broadcast it was i don't know if it was pitch selection i don't know if it was location i don't care but i'm glad i have my co-ace back at least for the time being the, talk to me in a week after the atlanta series and we'll see how we're feeling but aaron nola wasn't even the star of the game um, the scoring got started with, uh, in the third, you had Pache with a walk and Schwarber ropes a double down the right field line for that loser. Josh Bell to misplay the ball makes it one, nothing. And then Trey Turner singled off of, uh, off of Braxton Garrett, uh, to score Kyle Schwarber. Uh, and then now we're hitting at two, nothing. And then JT Real Muto with the first home run of the Phillies postseason in 2023 with a solo home run to, to left was a bomb off. None other than 2022 NL champ, David Robertson. You're really earning your stripes here this year, man. Um, uh, and I just want to, I have a, I have a beef to, I have beef to pick with David Robertson. Where the hell was this David Robertson during the 2022 playoffs? Because David Robertson that I know with that wore the Phillies pinstripes was throwing 93 mile an hour meatballs. This guy comes out of the bullpen fire in 96 with cut and great curve. Where was this guy? Where were you, David Robertson? Huh? Huh, David? Anyway, um, then in the sixth inning, is when the fun began. Um, you know, the Brave, the excuse me, not the Braves. I'm focused on the Braves, but the Marlins did threaten in this in these past couple innings, but the double play ball was really helpful. Um, they mentioned in the broadcast the Marlins have hit into the most double plays at MLB. So that played a huge factor into that to this game. But then we get to the sixth inning, and I think this gave me goosebumps watching this back. Um, Alec Bohm hits a double. You then bring in Andrew Nardi, great left-handed reliever. He walks Bryce Harper. JT Romuto pops up, and I was pissed. I'm like, of course, here comes the double play by Nick Castellanos. Nearly was. And the aforementioned Jake Berger boots the ball. You then have bases loaded for Bryson Stott, and he hits the second grand slam in Philly's postseason history. And the replay that was circulating was no commentary, no nothing, just crowd noise. And you have the the fans doing his walk up music, the oh, oh, okay, and goes to the cheers and immediately hunting first pitch fastball, swacks it right into the right field stands. And I was losing my mind. I, I watched it literally like five, 10 feet past the camera because I have a TV set up there and, and that uh, and my chair because uh, I've been relegated to watching in the basement because I scream. I get crazy. At, you know, people have to go to sleep at reasonable times because they have a job they have to go to in the morning. Ridiculous, I know. Um, so I was watching in the basement. I'm losing my mind. My brother's calling me. My friends are calling me, like, losing their minds, and it was awesome. Seven-nothing lead. You let Aaron Nola cook in the in the seventh. He, he goes out there. He then had Orion Kirkring dismantling the Marlins and then Gregory Soto in the in the ninth inning 
gives up the run, but whatever. Of course, who else? Josh Bell drives in the run. Shocking. Uh, and then uh, fitting Jazz Chisholm, who claimed the Marlins were for the bright lights when 0 for 8 in this series. And the final out of the Marlins season was Jazz Chisholm looking at a 100-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle from Gregory Soto. <laughs> Taking care of business. And now we shift. Rematch of the 2022 National League Division Series. The Philadelphia Phillies versus the Atlanta Braves. And I think a lot of people were expecting this rematch. Um, not to oversight the, the Marlins, but I was circling this rematch. It It's going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be like Rocky Balboa in the ring fighting for his life. Both people, they're unconscious, just trying to beat the crap out of each other like that save um but it's oh i already have a tiktok in my head of if the phillies win so knock on wood that that sees the light of day um it's gonna be a bloodbath uh game one the starters haven't been announced yet but it's probably gonna be strider suarez game two is probably gonna be wheeler morton's hurt freed's hurt so it's elder would you go Bryce Elder in game two and game three is Nola. And I, I don't know who else is on that pitching rotation. Who is? Because I know Elder is probably going to pitch one of those games. Hold on. Uh, Braves pitching rotation. Because I know Charlie Morton. No, that's the athletic. I can't. Okay, here we go. Projected starters. That's for the Phillies. Do they have? Yeah, see, they're having Max Freed listed, but Max Freed has that blister. So how much are you really going to get out of him? Um, and they said Bryce Elder because Charlie Morton's hurt. Um, Phillies can win this series. I mean, I've been saying it for forever, and I think the baseball world agrees that the only team that can beat the Atlanta Braves, who are the best team in baseball, are the Philadelphia Phillies. I have to give respect to Atlanta. They are a great run organization. They're the best team in baseball. They're going to be the best team in baseball for years to come. But you got to look at the Phillies. You know, obviously they did it last year, but they were hurt. You know, Strider was hurt. Morton got hurt. Uh, their offense was banged up a little bit. And, and it's not going to be a cakewalk like a lot of Phillies fans think it's going to be. I think it's going to go all five games. I think it's going to be Phillies in five. I think it's going to be literally like punch, counter punch, sucker punch, beat them both into the ground and may the best team win. Because I think whoever wins this series is going to win the World Series. I think it's going to be a bloodbath, and I'm so excited for it. Um, It's the Phillies can do it. I mean, there's no reason why they should be afraid of Atlanta, but there's also a ton of reasons to be afraid of Atlanta because they are the best team in baseball. But the Phillies just play Atlanta so well. I mean, they went, what, 9-11 and against them this year, but a lot of those games were coin flips. It could have gone either way, and I keep looking back in that four-game series in Philly was every single one of those games could have gone either way. Um Obviously, it played into the Braves' favor, but hopefully that was the only favor that they had. They went down there to Atlanta when Atlanta was still fighting for for um, the first round or uh, fighting for uh, seeding-wise, uh, and they took two out of three there pretty handedly, too. And I think the Phillies can get to this Atlanta Braves' bullpen. I mean, you have Iglesias, Bryce Harper, his favorite player, Brad Hand, who's been great against lefties, but if they can manipulate... Um, Pache and Rojas, you know, if Marsh is due up, then pinch hit Rojas or pinch hit Pache in that situation because Brad Hand's numbers are distinctly better. AJ Minter is just a pain in the you know what. Like he's, I hate him. Who else? Jesse Chavez, is he still in that bullpen? I think. And then uh, who else is down there? They just have dudes down there. I feel like they spawn out of nowhere for God's sakes. And then not to mention the offense, Sean Murphy, career year. Matt Olson career year, Ozzy Alves career year, Orlando Arcia career year, Austin Riley career year, Ronald Cunha career, Marcelo Zunia, who miraculously hit 40 home runs this year. I, I don't believe it. And then Eddie Rosario is Eddie Rosario. And then the bench, you have Luke Williams, you have Nicky Lopez, you have 
Travis Darno. Like, it's not going to be easy, but I just, again, I, I respect the Braves. I refuse to believe that Marcelo Zuna hit 40 home runs this year after a disaster past two years. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to believe it. It's not a hero there. I won't talk about it. But um, Phillies in five. I think it's going to be a dog fight. I think it's going to be tooth and nail, punch, counter punch. Exactly as advertised, I hope this series is going to be. Um, win or lose, it's going to be a hell of a series for both teams. And may the best team win, basically. Um, but that's going to do it for me. I'm going to be back at the conclusion of the NLDS. And again, if the Phillies lose, if you guys want me to continue coverage on the, the major league postseason, I have no problem doing that. I, um, I love baseball, not just Phillies. So hopefully next time I'm talking to you, we're talking about a series preview of the Dodgers or D backs. Let's fingers crossed for that. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for, for watching and listening. Follow all the socials down below and I will see you guys very, very soon.